the, the fourth thing that I feel called to when I listen to the story of Job um, in the Bible is a call to be present with the unknown. And that sometimes there are just things that we just, we just don't know. Um, and that's something that, again, is uncomfortable. It's not a place I want to be as a scientist. Um, but sometimes everything that we know about science tells us that we're just going to be in that place of the unknown. Yes, I would like to humbly and respectfully disagree with you. My name is Annie Drian, and um, I'm a founder of Cosmos Studios and very an honored to have been the longtime collaborator of Carl Sagan. And I'd like to say that I think it's just the opposite of what you're saying from my perspective, humbly. One is that I think that science has a, ha, tolerates the unknown in a way that religion doesn't. My argument is not with people who search for God. My argument is with people who feel that our understanding of God is completed. And those are the people who make so much of our existence on this planet such a hell because they really think that they have the right to kill other people, to hurt them because of what they understand God's will to be. That's a very destructive thing. So science, science is the whole methodology of science is saying that we are not permitted these absolute truths that religion s pretends to have, that we do not know the answer to these questions. And not only that, but the little that we think we do know, if you can prove us wrong, we'll give you our highest reward. And that's part of the methodology. That's part of the whole functioning of the system itself. So yes, in answer to what Joan was saying earlier, scientists do terrible things. Science, scientists have biases. Religious people do terrible things, and they have biases. But absolutely intrinsic to the whole scientific, the methodology of science is that error-correcting mechanism, which says we must never lose sight of that. That's not in religion. That's not present at all. Talk about humble. It's the fact that we do science and that we can bring ourselves to see that little tiny earth in Carolyn's presentation. That is humility. What science has done for us spiritually is that it has been the only thing that I know of that has compelled us to wean ourselves of our infantile need for centrality. And that was present, that is very much the essence of so many religious formulations of where we come from, why we came to be. It's the sign of mental, mental health that we can bear to think that this planet was perfectly fine for four and a half billion years without us. That cosmic evolution goes on for 13 and a half billion years before we even get here. How long have we been in science? How long have we systematically been looking at nature? Not even 400 years. And yet science gets us out to Enceladus. It takes us out of the solar system. It enables us to wean ourselves of that spiritual narcissism which compelled us to be at the center of everything. So when it comes to humility, when it comes to uh, a tolerance for ambiguity and for the unknown, I think science worships the unknown. I think scientists are most comfortable in that place of not knowing. And that's where they live. And that's, that's the great strength of science. So I would respectfully disagree. Thank you.